Um, I just want to thank everyone for coming and attending today. Um, my name is Blong Bang. Um, I was actually here in 2021 as a coordinator, and now I'm back in. Um, sorry, up on the screen. Um, back as a research regulatory specialist for the CTSI CTO. Um, and today we'll be touching base on Florence eBinders. Um, if anyone have any questions, feel free to stop me at any time and we'll get started. Um, the purpose for Florence eBinders is that it's a secure FDA Part 11 and HIPAA compliant system that replaces paper forms and physical binders, giving research teams an efficient, compliant way to electronically sign, manage, store and collaborate on study documents and to facilitate remote monitoring. Um, just to note, Florence eBinders also interfaces with Encore, our CTMS system, um, to automate creation of binders, templates, and study team roles in eBinders. I uh, just want to make note here that as of July 1st, 2021, all industry-sponsored clinical trials um, approved by the MCW-IRB are required to use Florence. Any human research studies that are investigated, initiated, federally funded, or cooperative group clinical trials are encouraged to use e-binders, but are not required. Um, Florence is uh, managed by the Office of Research. If you have any questions about it, please contact Florence at mcw.edu. We're always looking for super users for peer-to-peer -peer -to -peer support. Uh, do note that our central support areas, including HRPP, quality team, culture, CPS, and our service areas, um, such as radiology and IDS, are now using Florence to access study documents versus emailing. Um, it's important that teams make sure records are kept up to date, um, no different than when we had a physical binder. Um, getting started in Florence. Uh, prior to being um, or having access to MCW Florence eBinders, research staff and investigators must complete the required training components for MCW to maintain compliance with federal regulations and HIPAA requirements. Uh, the staff will have to complete 12 online training modules, which is roughly two hours to complete, and investigator training will have a much shorter training. Um, an individual signature log would need to be printed out and um, staff and investigators will need to complete and scan the log in preparation for an upload into Florence. This document is a wet ink document and needs to be legible to the reader. Once that is done, staff and PI will need to attest to the completion of Florence eBinder training in Florence. Um, I have attached this link here. Let's see if it shows up. These are the steps for um, research staff training. It's a very easy to follow. Uh, the investigator one is roughly the same, just much shorter. that. Uh, here is an example of the individual signature log. Um, printing name here, your signature, and then just an example of handwriting sample, and then your acknowledgement. Once that is completed, it will be uploaded into Florence. And then once that is done, the Florence team will create your account. Um, and this is an attestation that you will have this link in Florence to comply with our Florence system. The Florence capabilities here I have, um, we are now going to be using electronic files. Um, Florence has just come out with a new document um, viewer. I will be touching base on that in a live demo. Um, we can also create now electronic logs and to steer away from paper logs. Um, as well as using electronic signatures versus wedding. Um, 
roles and permissions for each member who have access to the binders are going to be different depending on your roles. And then you can create tasks and send announcements for your study team. Attached here is a link to help guide and where to place documents into the study binder. The link will be a mapping guide created by MCW Super Admin Team that will break down the branches of each MCW template folder and provide clarifications and or guidance for use of specific mm -hmm. documents or subfolders. The uh, minimum footprint template that we will be showing you guys shortly, the Office of Research advises that study teams do not deviate from the minimal footprint template in Florence. Um, we ask that you please refrain from changing the parent folders uh, one through eight within your study binders due to the integration between Encore and Florence. Changing these folders' names impacts the study specific role, configurations, and access, including um, for external monitors. However, you can rename slash delete any subfolders within these um, folders. Here is a quick. Yeah. Um, this is the mapping of the MCW basic study binder uh, footprint. It is a good uh, guidance on where you, uh, where the documents from sponsor can be put into. So um, we have one study subject information, two our safety committee reviews. Um, these are all the subfolders. And three is the external monitoring and auditing, four is sponsor documents. Five is communications, six is the regulatory and personnel management, seven is feasibility and qualification, and eight is contracts and financials. Um, again, this is a very good um, guideline on, on the folder structure and as well as where you think documents should go. And here are just some good tools that's on the Florence website on InfoScope. If you have any questions or any concerns, um, these are good, good tips and tricks on how to um, use Florence effectively. Any questions on the presentation? How long is the training? Uh, training for investigators is about 30 minutes, I want to say, and training for staff, study staff is about two hours. I have a quick question. I noticed um, I do, I use adverse event worksheets for this. And so I have an initial report, but then sometimes I need to update it if the AE ended and request additional signatures. I just noticed, I before was able to update this, download and update and re-upload without problem. Uh, but now it won't let me download a form if it's already been signed and won't let me, well, it won't let me modify the form once it's been signed. Is this because of a new update? And do you know a workaround? Hi, Adrian, it's Jen. Um, this is, hey. uh, how's it going? Um, <clears throat> this was actually a recent update that was initiated by Florence um, because of when a document was signed and executed to then make a change to it. Um, mm -hmm. We have a password that you can do to unlock that document to make a change, but um, and, and I've only heard of a handful of times where it's created any issues, but we also have the ability to opt out of that. Um, so if it gets to be annoying for people um, as an organization, we can undo that feature that, that it will. So I can follow up online and give you that password to, Thank you. to be able to update your document. But if others encounter that issue, just shoot us an email at Florence Help and we can help you out. Okay. Or if it gets to be too much again, we can opt out of that too. Okay, great. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Jen. Um, we, I will be doing a live demo on just some of the very general things that we use in Florence for. Um, so uploading a document is very, very easy in this left corner here. Um, you can just click and drag, or if someone has placed a placeholder for you, which is what this is, uh, you click on it. 
you can just click and drag into here as well. Um, I'm gonna touch base on the new document viewer here. <laughs> okay. Um, this is just an example of a consent form I created. Um, in this document viewer, it's very easy to use. Um, it seems that I cannot read it correctly until this form has been signed. Example of the protocol I have in here. So this works very similar now to um, Adobe. Um, it only works if you have a Microsoft Word template or a Adobe PDF uploaded into it. If it's a scanned document, you can't use the, the document viewer functions um, this effectively. Um, so here you can search for certain things in the protocol now. So schedule up. Uh, events will pop up if you search for it. Anything you need to search for, you can now do that. Um, you can now annotate in here. Um, do note that anything that you do annotate will be audited and saved. So we can just say, uh, if you click save, it will change into This version one will change into a version two. And then which type of documents can you not open in this viewer? Um, scan documents won't work. You can't search for um, anything in that scan document. So search person. You can still view it the same as you view it here. Um, you can also redact now with this. So it's really easy. You just click redact. You want to redact this entire portion. <laughs> um, you do have to provide a reason at any time that you are doing anything to the document because it is audited. Again, this is now version three. And this has been redacted. Um, since we are now moving over to electronic uh, documents, um, I know some studies in the CTSI are utilizing it, but they were paper binders beforehand. Um, we have a, I wouldn't say a new way of certifying documents, but um, you will now have to certify any web ink signatures in Florence to note to sponsors that that is the original source. So to do that, you would click manage. Oh, actually, sorry. You would hit sign the document. Sign via addendum, select reason, and certify. <clears throat> this will create the document as a certified copy as the, would be the original version. To do that, Um, on this note, one of the common questions we get is about consent forms, because I think it's all ingrained in us as research staff that, you know, always hang on to that wedding signature consent form. But obviously space is at a limit. And if studies have been closed, if you have file cabinets of, of wedding signatures, you could scan them, upload them into Florence, mark them as a certified copy, and that becomes the new original. Um, part of that part 11 compliance is that piece. So um, our IRB um, SOP supports that, so um, you're not breaking any rules, local or federal or otherwise. The, the key is not just scanning it, but marking it as certified. 
makes it that that's the new original. So um, just food for thought is as you have limited space, if it's time to archive things instead of sending them away and paying for Iron Mountain, you can store them in Florence for free. So just a question of so can a coordinator certify yeah. it or does the PI have to sign? Coordinator can coordinator can. Uh, once you have certified it, they'll sign it down here. Will indicate that you've certified the copy. Yeah. So. so, but things that only a PI can sign, the A logs, can those be managed through here as well? Yes. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And and you could ask the PI. You you can do a signature request and mark it and the market is certified. So when that PI signs it, it becomes the certified. That's my next question. Like in Epic, you can. No, okay. Pin the position yep. to yep. go and pin as like an pin that order to produce. Okay. Yep. So I will actually touch base on like things like oh, that no, box no, right here. Not a problem. She is actually next door. Mm -hmm. She. I need clear direction. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I uh, created an example DOA log here. Uh, this is just a template that we use here. Um, fill out these information accordingly. It just kind of helps um, any understand anybody on the study team just kind of understand where this log is um, essentially supposed to be responsible for and who is taking care of it. Um, but if you were to make this DOA log and if whatever the sponsor has sent over to you, I would edit the legend here um, and creating some example responsibilities. And then when you create an entry here, I'm just going to do me, ERC, And whatever the responsibilities are, you can paste it here. Okay. If you click save here, this is where you can request signatures. Um, so this is one or two ways you can do it. You can click here, you can click your actions, request signatures, or do it here. is where you can request a signature. This works for PIs and study staff as well. Uh, for the team member, that would be me. Once that is requested, this right here will pop up. Um, it will make it a lot easier for your study team and your PI to recognize where they need to sign. Sign that quickly. There's my signature. If you were to request it from your PI, it's the same thing, except this now has says PI signature. is um and i know doa logs need to be signed at the end of the study so when that time comes instead of having them signed down here you can sign the entire document by requesting a signature for the entire log. Here. 
assign this figure as Entire lock signature. Do note here that um, if your PI hasn't signed, you can remind him here by clicking this and they'll send them an email. Yeah, I know it's very special, but I think it's just like, oh, so oh, here it is. I'm sorry, finalize or decline. It's finalized, it should sign. Yeah. Um, I am just let everyone know I'm in a testing environment. So this next portion I'm going to show you, I can't do it in this um testing environment. So I'm going to go sign into actual Florence. <laughs> That note, um, if anybody ever wants to be in that playground UAT environment, just let us know and we can give you access. We we don't give it to everybody because it's just another step and it's you know making sure you're in whether you're in prod or UAT. So, um, but uh, we used it early on. But if, if you ever want to just play and not worry about breaking anything, um, just reach out. Yeah. So if we previously had previously had access. We won't don't now. You should still have it. Still, it should, so, so they call it UAT, um, mm -hmm. AT, but um, yeah, if you don't or you can't log in, just let us know. I'm going to be going over roles and permissions. Each study has a set of roles preset already when the study is created. Um, again, this speaks with Encore, so just note that whatever role you have for your study staff, it's going to translate over into Florence as is. Um, but each role is can only view or have certain permissions. So when monitors are requesting access to this, they will not have certain permissions to view certain um, binders. But however, they will have uh, permissions to our central resource binder that holds a lot of our um, service centers and SOPs. Just a quick sample of our roles here. Remind me if we have like a almost like a little separate. But um, we do. So we kept it pretty generic with our yeah. roles. So every study had. So we have what we call the generic roles: um, study investigator, study coordinator, study affiliate. That relates to um, the central binders that Wong mentioned. But then on the study level, there's your study specific investigator, coordinator, affiliate, um, external monitor. 
um, and then also internal monitor slash QA. So like Roxanne Pritchard's group would have that role. So we kept it very um, <laughs> simple. So again, with your encore roles, they may map to, let's say in the cancer center, for instance, if you're a regulatory specialist, that maps to the coordinator role in, in Florence. We didn't wanna create all these multiple roles that had the same, same access. Um, but um, I think total there's six roles for each study. Actually, if you look at it that way, if you go to settings, roles, and then type in a study that it filters. There we go. So you might have similar studies because if, especially if you have consortiums or different sponsors, that naming convention, um, but you can get to your study and see that there's an investigator, a coordinator, an affiliate, um, regulatory oversight, that would be Kristen Bussey um, in the Office of Research. Thank you, Jen. Yeah, I was trying to find the screen here. Um, so as you said before, we have six roles and they're all differentiating on um, what role you have in Encore for the study team. super user admin roles by study are typically your research managers that that's maps from Encore to Florence. So the managers have a little bit more um, extra ability to, they can select a role um, and assign a role to an individual where a coordinator can turn that role on and off, but they can't say John Doe goes on this study. We let Encore do that. And then just to touch base back on the audit trails here, uh, you can view the full audit trail. So monitors can see this. Uh, everything that is done in the log will be noted here. So I created this post something today. And everything I've done so far is noted in this audit trail. I'm just going to touch briefly on two other um, capabilities that Florence has. Um, I haven't seen many or much study teams um, using this, but you can send announcements to your study team. Uh, you just click this announcement here, send an announcement whatever you want to say here and pertain to the study that you're in, you're going to have to choose the folder or binder of the announcements being sent to. Question, does that come as an email to them? They will pop up as an email, I think, and also whenever you open up your Florence account, it should pop up there. Um, so I've already created one here for an example. So every time populate here. That's the message and that was just the title. So it's going to relate to whatever you tag it. Uh, this is a good method to use when you're on uh, instead of sending your monitors how much mm -hmm. emails you just send an announcement so you'll see it as well. And then we have one more here that I, again, I haven't seen many study teams use, uh, but you can create tasks for your study team. So you go into the document viewer, create a task, the task is under value. Yes.
your task here will show you what you need to do. And I think it should take you to that. Yeah, yes, yep. Guys, here we say two. Questions. That's all I have for what is really used in Florence. I haven't come across any other other uses for it. Yeah, one quick one for me. Um, would you be able to go into the process of um, pulling an e-log and actually and actually using it in a folder uh, from the set of templates? Oh, sure. Like where to find the templates? Oh. So for the CTSI department, I've created. Uh, templates of what is typically sent over by sponsor for logs. Um, to do that, you can go to log templates and create a template of your liking, template name. So I created DOA logs, SIV logs, uh, training logs, and then the permanent log details you want to include. I would keep the legend and general information section uh, blank, you can edit it depending on what the study sponsor wants. Um, but to create one, Go to create new log, and all of the templates that were created will be here. Like train log, just delete. Fill these out accordingly, depending on your study, <clears throat> and. I know I just told you guys to keep this blank, but this was an old one that I created. So this information is already here. I'll make a quick note about the templates too and the log templates in production. You're gonna see a lot of them, whether it's you know the CTSI, Neuro, Cancer Center. Um, sure. You can look at them. Um, we just ask that you don't change somebody's existing template, but you also have the ability to duplicate. So if you don't wanna create from scratch, you can say, oh, you know, that Cancer Center AE template is really cool. Um, you could duplicate it, save it for your study or for your unit, and then import it as, as Long just showed, um, save you a couple steps um, or customize it to your specific study. So you don't have to create it from scratch every time. There are a lot of templates in there yeah, too. Yeah, there's a um, lot. So you can pretty much, and what I like to do is eliminate any sort of scanning of a sponsor log into the system and trying to create little signature boxes and all that stuff. I try to avoid that at all costs and use the e-logs. The e-logs are a thousand times easier to use. The version control of not only the log itself, but the signature lines are a lot easier to use. Um, so I definitely suggest using the electronic logs and getting away from the scanning or using of the sponsor paper documents wherever you can. The other thing I was just going to point out from a resources, and I know you had showed the um, the resources available on our Office of Research site, but on Florence, the, on the left-hand side, there's that need help link at the bottom. And this, even when we get questions about Florence, and if I don't know the answer, this is the first place I go to look. Um, and Florence stays ahead of their resource library way more than what we could manage. So some of the documents where links may be broken today, we pulled them because it's old news now. So this, you know, you can search by articles, they have videos, they have tutorials, um, they have so much information on here, you know, depending on whatever topic. Um, the other thing in the, the bottom right is a support link. Um, every now and then it'll pop up as a little chat. Um, it starts as a bot, but there are actually real people behind it. So you can just say, you know, hey, I'm experiencing this, there you go. Um, and 
um, they'll, you know, you might be in a queue for a couple of minutes, but then they'll get back to you if, if you're having issues, if you're having this, how do I do this? They can also refer you to the right place. So don't struggle trying to look for something or, you know, they, they have a lot of great resources through the vendor as well. Yeah, I agree. I think this is one of the more helpful help websites that I've ever come across for a system like this. Yeah. Um, even if you have a great idea, it'd be really great if the log could do this and it can't do it today, you can go on this little chat bot and say, suggestion for your development team, it'd be great to da, 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 and put it and they'll say, great, we'll log it with our development team. You don't have to send it to Sue and I to then, because we're going to do the same thing. So, you know, and, and honestly, I think the more voices they hear from the, the better, but um, they do listen to their customers on how they can make enhancements to the the product and suggestions from MCW um, have, have actually been rolled out in recent updates. Just one thing I want to touch base on. Um, apologies for me for my English being too fast. Um, when you're uploading documents, and if it's like a new protocol um, amendment or anything of this sort, um, we advise you to stack it on top of the original one. So here we have the example one that we used. If this was a amendment, you would just click version and upload a new version. You can click and drag and search for it. The same exact one I'm going to use, but and it will stack on top. Again, with the audit trail, you will see everything that was done to it previously. So this is the one before version three. All of your annotations will still be there. And this is a good tool for um, your updating any CVs or medical licenses. Um, I'm going to show you now quickly for how to shortcut. So I've already uploaded. Um, my CV into another folder. There's two ways you can do this. I'll show you one right here. If you click import shortcuts, I think this way is a lot better because you can import multiple things at once. So if you wanted to upload all of these, you can do it all at once as well. Here's my CV. And it's shortcutted to where that document is. Now, if you were to update this CV from the other folder, So you stacked another document on top of this. PCP on top of my CV just to show when you update the original file from where it is. Go back to that folder. It will show the update. How did you get to the audit trail? Um, it's going to be right here in the bottom left. Okay, thank you. Yep, 
شو نه هم چه In terms of access to the system, do people outside of the institution have access or can be tracked? Monitors will have to go through a training and we have them for that. We could use this for a multi site um, if we had the coordinating site. Versity, our partners at Versity, they actually have their own instance of Florence, but we're actually testing the ability to share documents between, because, you know, we have some PIs who are MCW, who partner with Versity, that if we can, you know, that CV, for example, or medical license, that it could cross between our teams. So um, we're, we're testing. But, um, yeah, so and then also same with, you know, for instance, our, our freighter and children's partners that um, you know, why we're talking about service areas who now have access to Florence and why we want that consistent use of that folder template, because if they're looking for a protocol, they're going to look in folder four. Um, and, and that way we're, you know, it's saving people's inboxes. It's saving you the time of having to send something. You can just say it's in Florence. There you go. So they have the appropriate access to go into those binders. And then I'm assuming you can link a document from one file to one other. You have to upload yeah. it twice. The short Through a short yeah. 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 So so like long show with um a CV or a medical license. So right. let's say that's in that individual's credential portfolio. I'll use Dr. Nattinger as an example. And if, if her CV and medical license were there and she's the PI of five studies. Right. If you shortcut it, okay. you update it once and it's going to update those five right. studies. So you don't yep. have to do it multiple times. Because you have five versions of the same thing. Exactly. Or you can miss one. Then. Yep. And so um, that's where we're trying to help those time savings. Yeah, this is massive time savings. The headache. Yep. Chasing PIs is not. You know, I think signatures, e signatures has been by far and, you know, where mm -hmm. people find the value because you're not perched outside of a clinic room trying to get somebody's signature. You can send it to them and it could be 2 a.m. and they're at a conference and they can sign it. Any other questions? Working on the chat. You mentioned it another highlight, the central resources binder, mm -hmm. um, just with, with our various partners. Um, this is not an end all be all. So if you have suggestions, it'd be really great if we could have, you know, these documents in. So, you know, again, it's accessible to monitors, but also to our end users. So when it comes to your documents for sponsor, for justification for Florence, for the IRB rosters, for our mobile lab values, um, the A True has a whole folder in there with the, the link to the tour and um, all of their SOPs. We're working with the pediatric True to get get their presence in there. Um, IDS has a folder. So um, if you find in your workflows, it'd be like it'd be really helpful instead of asking having to ask for this all the time. If it could just be in Florence, okay. um, let us know and we can we can see if we can make it happen. But. You know, IRB rosters, I feel, change like on monthly. So like that version control, um, you know, every month we're, we're changing version updated, but it's the most current version is is in there. So you don't have to test through the IRB or, you know, worry, it, it's always there, so. There's any more questions. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for your time today and thanks for attending. Again, if you have any questions for on Florence, reach out to our Florence at MCW ADU Hub team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.